Welcome to the PPMA webinar. Our topic today is an employer brand is organizational, organizational identity of your authority with Osborne Thomas. I'm Pam Parks. I'm your host for today's webinar. Happy Friday for all of you that are joining today. I'm a PPMA board member and my day job, an exec director for people and transformation at Essex County Council. But today's all about employer brand. And I am really looking forward to today's webinar. I'm actually doing some work on this in my own organization. So I'm hoping to get some great tips. Um, and we have Kate Wilson and Julie Osborne from Osborne Thomas, who are going to deliver our webinar today. So get your pens ready, get your notes ready, and get your questions ready. It'll be a really interesting webinar today. Over to you, Julie. Thank you, Pam. Um, hi, I am Julie Osborne. I am the Managing Director of Osborne Thomas, along with my colleague, Kate Wilson, who is our Business Development Manager. Um, so as Pam said, we're gonna give you an overview uh, in terms of the importance, particularly in this market of an employer brand. So in order to do that, we're gonna set some facts out for you, put it in context of what the market is happening at the moment and why this is so important. For those of you that don't know Osborne Thomas, we do three things. We are um, recruiters for permanent um, recruitment across local government, interim recruitment, again, predominantly across the local authorities. Um, and thirdly um, is the HR consultancy arm. And this very much fits inside that HR consultancy stuff that we do, um, which is very wide and varied. Anything from talking about IR35 to, as you will see now, as Kate's going to go through it, employer branding. Um, so with no further ado, because we've got a very short space of time, we're going to run through this about 15, 20 minutes, um, hopefully any questions at the end, but feel free to put any questions inside the chat as well. Kate, I'll hand over to you. Okay, thank you. Um, welcome, everybody. So, as Julie said, short on time, um, but we did want to start with a bit of the market context in terms of what's going on in the market, which I think will really kind of reaffirm perhaps why the employer brand perhaps has never been uh, as more key as it is now in the sense of how you maximize your return on it. Um, we'll run through a little bit in terms of what does good look like, and why should you be looking at your employer brand, and we've got a case study with some quick wins. So um, the chief executive of the REC, uh, this is a quote from him in the sense of what's going on. So you know, when you look, when you think about the economy and uh, the uncertainty that we're currently living in, the cost of living crisis and a, a widely acknowledged uh, skill shortage and right across the piece in the sense of employers are really struggling to recruit. Um, so what are the stats looking like today? So there's currently 1.7 million active job postings in the UK market. Those are way ahead still of where we were pre-COVID times. Um, it was interesting to note that the week after Easter, the increase um, in postings was up by 189,000 odd, and that's 19.5% of an increase on this time last year. So the market is very buoyant. There's a lot of vacancies out there. The competition is fierce. Organisations like yourselves and ourselves need to be doing a lot to push our messages out to the market in sense of why should someone want to come and work at your organisation. Over 50% of employers are reporting hard to fill vacancies. Now, what's quite interesting is whilst the private sector would appear to see a, a decline in the number of vacancies, for local government, there's absolutely no change at all. Um, the challenges are still immense. And as I mentioned earlier, it's really quite difficult to define a specific group. Historically, teachers, social workers, those were the sorts of roles that people struggled um, with finding. Um, now it's really right across the piece and across all levels. This is a chart from the REC as well. So it, um, it kind of highlights the growth in job postings. And as you can see, it goes right back to December 2021. This is quite phenomenal really in the sense of uh, the increase in vacancies in the market. Leading the way at the top there is the Northeast, the Southeast, uh, east of England and the North West. Now, when I say the South East, that does not include London. So you can see sort of stats here of 80% for the North East, for example, that blue line across the top. 
Where's London? Uh, London's down at 14.8%. So that would appear to be seeing, while still an increase in job postings, uh, less than other parts of the country. So how are employers responding to these recruitment challenges at the moment? So the chart on the right hand side gives you an indication of the sorts of things that they're doing. I'll pick out just a few of them. Um, so 40% of organisations are looking to upskill their staff. That's an increase in 5% over the last six months. Retention is absolutely key at the moment for organisations. They are working hard to try and uh, retain their staff, um, whether that's the upskilling or increasing their duties, etc. I'm not quite sure how well increasing someone's duties will go down or is going down with people, but yeah, 36% of organisations are looking at that. Increase in salary. So yes, there's been some big hikes in salaries um, over the last six months or so. Improving the quality of their job. Um, that's particularly pertinent, I think, for younger people who are more demanding, I think, when it comes to putting things back into the community, uh, their awareness of culture, uh, equality, diversity and inclusion. They want to contribute to that. Um, so that's a big thing for younger people. And then, yes, people are looking at bringing uh, parents, old workers back into the workforce. What's gone from that list since we last looked at it about six months ago is the promoting of flexible vacancies, uh, flexible working rather. Um, I'm not quite sure why that's gone. Um, I still think it's important to promote flexible working. If you have a flexible policy within your organisation, that's going to be attractive to particular candidates who want that uh, choice, if you like, in terms of working in the office for a couple of days of the week versus working from home or elsewhere. What I find absolutely fascinating is that there's no mention of organisations reviewing their employer brand or looking at their recruitment processes. And let's not forget that recruitment processes are just as important as the pictures, the images, the messages you put out to the market. What candidates then go through in terms of their experience of the process will either positively impact um, their view of, your, of you as an employer or potentially negative. So yes, um, it's never been more important than now. Um, I was reading some quite interesting uh, research yesterday and this research was identifying candidates as consumers. Uh, we as consumers, you know, we can shop online, we can go to review sites, we can look at uh, compare the market, we can see uh, how organisations and where, what we want to shop from them um, is different to others and why we should choose one organisation against another. There seems to be less of an em emphasis on that when it comes to the candidate messages that we want to put out to the market. And I'm quite surprised when I look at particularly local government websites, the lack of information and the lack of inclusivity, et cetera, on those sites. So what does the employer brand, what, does, what is the meaning of an employer brand? It's, it's the organisational identity of your authority. It's what people identify you with, react to and remember, if you like, in the sense of, OK, so that's the branding for that organisation. It makes them stand out as a good employer and it stands out to me as a candidate. And that's important to me because I want to know what the differentiators are, um, what the offer is, what the values of the organisation is, those sorts of things. Those elements will significantly improve the quality of the talent pools that you're able to attract. And I think I'm sure with all the people who are on this call, you will absolutely identify with that in terms of um, the kind of candidates that you have coming through the doors at the moment. So who does it well? I'm not actually going to click into these um, links on this particular call just because uh, we are a bit tight on time, but I wanted to include them within this presentation because we'll share the presentation after this uh, webinar in the sense of you can then have a look at these particular websites, microsites at your own time and leisure. I highlighted Swindon because they won the PPMA employer branding um, uh, category at the recent PPMA conference and I've highlighted in Sutton because this is a campaign that actually we handled on behalf of the London Borough of Sutton to recruit uh, adult social workers and Julie's going to tell us a little bit more about that. So yeah when you get this presentation come through do have a look at it. The sorts of things that I think you will see when you look at them 
um, and this is why an employer brand is so important, is, is they have a clear proposition. So again, me as a candidate, I know exactly what that organisation is saying to me. So Swindon, for example, is saying we're better with you. Um, Sutton is saying in Sutton, that's very nice and inclusive. And again, when you have a look at the websites and the, the collateral there, you'll, I think, recognise why that might perhaps identify with a candidate that's interested in working for you. Really important is some strong imagery. It's, it's got to be authentic at the same time. Um, so you don't want to be putting um, untruths into the minds of candidates because actually they do need to know what the reality is. If it's a tough job and you're going to have to work really hard, you need to be telling them. Um, it needs to be interesting. It needs to be inclusive. It needs to separate you. So have a think about some of the other local authorities and the messages they're putting out in the market. How does your message compare to theirs? And if it's the same, then you're not really differentiating yourself in any way. Content, really important. So it's not just about the pictures. Um, you need to be thinking about what you're including within your site and giving candidates as much information as you possibly can. So what it might like, what it might be like to work for you as an organization, what the comprehensive benefits are, what your values are. Um, I think it's quite nice to include people. Um, so your own real people in terms of profiles of them, maybe some video content where they are explaining and talking about what it's like to work for, for you as an organization. They're social. Um, so I'm amazed when I go to some websites for local authorities and there is no link to LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is the number one recruitment platform in the UK, probably in the world. Um, why are they not linking that uh, their own uh, organisation through to LinkedIn? Why do they not have a LinkedIn page where they're promoting vacancies? That just for me seems absolutely bonkers. Um, social is the way forward. It's how people are now interacting, whether it's through their phone, etc. You need to be in that space. I've mentioned interactivity, video, people profiles, etc. The site also needs to be easy to navigate. If something's more than a couple of clicks away, they're probably going to walk away, in all, all, all honesty, because it's too difficult to find what they're looking for. Mobile enabled, yeah, absolutely. So these are two sites that have significantly invested in the longer term when it comes to the visual content and navigational elements. As I alluded to earlier, it's not just those elements that have an impact on your employer brand. There is so much more to it than that. And I think this is when, oh no, there's a little tool actually that you can use to uh, review your own employer brand. And the easiest way to do that is through your own careers pages. So this is a little tool that you can use. Um, I'm just gonna check what the name of it is. It's the careers website index. Um, so if you Google it, you should be able to find it. This is an audit we did of one of our clients quite recently. As you can see, the maximum score that you can score is 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, which actually comes to 160. This organization scored just 50 with regards to elements within their website, i.e. their brand. And you can see uh, careers visibility, they scored three. So over here. Uh, they're trying to access their jobs, etc. was really quite challenging. Looking at the navigation and architecture, not good. Content lacking. Mobile optimization, optimization great, but if there's no content, not quite sure what the point is of having mobile optimized careers pages. So you, this is a particularly poor example of an organization that's got a poor employer brand, um, and that's obviously impacting on their careers pages. So back to my point a moment ago, it's more than just the pictures and the images. And Julie, over to you. Thanks, Kate. Yeah, I think I think people really get confused with an employer brand, thinking that you know it's it's how jazzy my photographs have got to be and what's got to be out there. It's got to be the whole process. And I think people forget that an employer brand goes all the way through to people starting with inside an organization. So to use the word that everybody wants to ban at the moment, onboarding, um, but that onboarding strategy is equally as important as the front end and what you're putting out there. Um, what channels you're using, how you're going out into the market. Again, 
People sometimes do the same thing. So, for example, I have a contract with The Guardian, um, which means all my jobs can go into The Guardian. And irrespective of what it is, everybody's putting adverts out into The Guardian. It's depleting what you're trying to do. I know it's free. I know you've got a contract. But we really need to think <laughs> about what we're putting out on some of these major contracts. It needs to embrace every single element of the recruitment strategy and you need to look at it from the start to the finish and the finish is somebody joining your organization being inducted into the organization it doesn't stop when your applications come through and i get the next slide kate you can thank you so the, and we're using Sutton because we've literally just finished this campaign and it was actually for the recruitment of adult social workers so quite pertinent, very, very difficult, always been difficult. How have we managed to achieve this? Um, we are not recruiting social workers, as in going out there, tapping them on the shoulder, asking them to come in. We are looking at developing a brand for Sutton to go out to the market to say, hey, have a look at our vacancies, look at what we're doing inside Sutton. So as much as the visuals are strong visuals that went out and the media schedule was great, some of the biggest wins for Sutton were things like interviewing within 48 hours. The result of this campaign, which has gone on for eight months, is Sutton no longer have any vacancies for social workers. They've recruited 36 across social workers, team managers and OTs, but they now have no social work vacancies. So their reliance on temporary expenditure, which we all know is extremely high and has a critical eye by members, is gone, it's disappeared inside the biggest category of any authority. If you look at some of the um, stats across London in terms of where temporary spend is, predominantly is within inside social care. So the investment that Sutton have done inside this campaign, and it was a significant investment. Uh, this is not a quick win. Over a period of time, a stop-start campaign over eight months has resulted in them recruiting effectively across all of those areas. And I know you'll all know how difficult those areas are to get. So that was a very quick, brief whiz through of employer brand uh, and what it means in the market. I saw Pam put a question up about the decline in private sector um, and whether that's good for the public sector. It de Pam, it depends. It depends what area, if you're looking at, <coughs> For example, some of the fact that, particularly in architecture, the salaries are not comparable. People are going to stay inside the private sector because the public sector cannot offer them what it is that they need. Um, so it depends what areas it is as to whether that will help in certain areas within inside the public sector, but it's certainly not across the board. So, but we should be keeping an eye, shouldn't we, on the areas in the private sector that are shedding for want of a better word it's not the right word <laughs> releasing yeah. um staff particularly i'm just thinking of like technology so i'm responsible for technology services at essex and i'm always wondering whether it's um you're hearing about uh job losses in google and other places they're letting them go they could be convinced in you know uh you know starting to look at other sectors that they may want to work in um, whilst the market changes. And we know that there's a, an area that's got a lot of turnover continuously. So it's not that we want to keep people forever. We know that we may be able to benefit from some sectors um, yeah. that are actually releasing stuff, I thought. And, and I don't disagree with you. And I think it's what your proposition is to that market. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing things that are really, really exciting, and I'm in a, <clears throat> a data architect and I think actually I'm going to get my teeth into something that's really interesting. You need to sell the proposition of what yeah. it is that's yeah. going to happen with inside the authority that says, I know I'm at Google and it sounds really great, but actually I'm just one of 98 people. Mm -hmm. If I went to Essex, I could really handle this. So it, it's understanding what your proposition is against each individual job. Um, that will sell it to somebody. Yeah. Uh, sometimes there's too much still going on in this market where people are just slamming out JD, slamming out um, person specs, and there's no sell. Mm -hmm. What's in it for me? Yeah, I totally agree. 
Uh, and the other thing I was going to, to mention, I'm waiting for people to either put their, I can't see any hands or people wanting to, to come in. Um, but I'm giving you a few more moments if you want to put any questions in the, in the chat. The other thing I was going to, uh, I suppose, affirm is that that assessment tool that you were talking about, Kate, it, that's yeah. a really good uh, yes. assessment tool. Easy to use, easy to do. Yeah, exactly. You know, you, you can do it yourself. Um, so it, when I share the presentation, people can just literally take a look at that chart and give themselves a score. And I would suggest that they don't just score themselves. They ask other people to also score them mm -hmm. because it's all we're all like very confident that, oh, um, you know, me as the head of HR, oh, our candidate recruitment processes are absolutely fine uh, compared to who? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, frankly uh, where is the comparison there so I think anything like that is probably worth having some independent people look at it as well yeah and do it for others as well do it for your yeah. neighboring, neighbor, neighboring authorities uh, yeah. be much more critical of your neighboring authorities than you are of yourself and then <laughs> definitely that makes good sense and as I said in the chat a good baseline isn't it before you decide where to put your energy your effort and your money Absolutely. I mean, they must have spent, you know, that particular example, they must have spent quite a lot of money with the technology to get it mobile enabled, but they've invested nothing in putting any content on there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, bizarre. I, I, don't I don't understand it. <laughs> um, any questions from people who are on the call? I am definitely looking at the chat and I can't see anything or unless it's not moving. I no, can't I see can't any see. either. No, no, no. I can't see anything on there. So I'm going to ask a, a, another question. Cheeky, because I'm having a look at my um, employer brand at the moment. So I think we've got a pretty strong uh, employer brand. And I'd agree. I would also think that we have some of the tips that you've given. I think we've tried to follow that, in particular using our own uh, staff in our yeah. visuals, uh, which I thought was really important. I thought was really important, but I'm challenging myself here now because because actually, how do people know that they they're, they're your stuff? True. Um, Very easy to find out. I'll just go on LinkedIn and Google. Pam, oh. I can find out. Exactly, <laughs> I can find out exactly where she is. I can look at LinkedIn. I can see your profile. I can see exactly what organisation you work for. You're not a made-up person. You're real. Oh. Um, very, very easy to find people now. Um, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's very easy to trace back. So if someone's there on the video going, you know, I used to work at another organisation. It wasn't as good as this organisation. I can very quickly find out which organisation they were talking about. Thank and you. and Pam, I agree. Um, on another webinar that we did, we had included Essex actually as a good um, destination to go to and have a look at the strength of your branding and all of the content on your site. So yeah, absolutely agree. Oh, thanks for that. Lovely. Quite all right. Lovely to hear. We're doing a refresh of it. Yeah. Moments. I might come speak to you individually. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Be delighted. Be great. Um, um, we have a question. So uh, thanks for the very helpful presentation. How do you see an employer brand sit alongside a broader organizational narrative brand? The alignment they're talking about there. Which yeah. I think is pretty key. What do you guys think? Yeah. Julie, did you have a comment? Yeah, I think there has to be an overarching message that says, you know, we are Manchester, tell from my accent that's why I picked Manchester <laughs> we are Manchester um this is so great being in Manchester etc and the employee employer branding um needs to fit into that needs to match the culture and needs to reflect some of the things that are going out as a broader organization it can be as we've just done with the Sutton thing you know specifically for social workers but it needs to have um, a backdrop of being with inside that organization. It can't just be segregated from the two. Mm. So it needs to feel like it's one thing. Um, I remember a long time ago when I used to work at Riley, we got a load of collateral out and we looked at the collateral for an organization and this one was green, this one was pink, this one was yellow. And it's like, mm -hmm. oh, who the hell are these people? There is no synergy. 
So you have mm -hmm. to have some synergy between the overarching brand and what you're saying out to the market and who you are as an employer. Totally agree. Totally agree. That does make lots of sense. That alignment is really, really important. Or else, as Kate said in the presentation, it's not authentic. Yes. And, uh, and you know, you can have an excellent, as you say, uh, uh, brand for a particular part of the business like social work but actually the organization as a whole is what the employee will experience so they're not just going to uh, experience the social care part of the service they will also experience other parts of the organization and if that's not aligned it won't make much sense so totally and agree. it goes back to that beginning bit Pam with um, you know this is not about a pretty picture at the front end this is about how you induct people into the organization. Uh, mm -hmm. It's about how you interview. It's about how long you've made a candidate wait. It's about how, what interaction you've had with that candidate during the job offer and starting. Mm -hmm. um, and if my process is really bad, you know, we've had chief executives who've had really bad processes when they've joined organizations. Uh, nothing's ready for them. There's no laptop. If there is a laptop, there's no headset. Nobody even knows they were going to turn up. Uh, and it's all like a bit of a shock. And it's like, well, what impression is that giving me of how much you really want me in this organisation? Yeah. Yeah. So, so my question, my next question, if we've got a chance just for a, a minute or two, is around the value add. So I'm just trying to, so you talked about the level of vacancies, you talked about the no changing uh, local government so it is worthwhile having a look at your employee brand so I'm just trying to think of the business case now when you're trying to convince senior leaders people who are holding budgets uh, for this type of stuff about where do you think the value add is so you talked about something in terms of 36 hours mm -hmm. I suppose there is a financial benefit isn't it to doing some investment into your uh, employer brand so I'm just trying to get a sense about how we should be pitching this to yeah you. and it's when you've got something that's credible and has been done and seen and, and gone like the Sutton thing you can say we used to spend nine hundred thousand pounds on temps it's cost us six hundred thousand pounds to recruit everybody we have a three hundred thousand pound saving per annum yeah and, and it, it's very very clear it's very difficult at the start of the process to go you can say if by reducing the temporary expenditure in these areas etc um but real hard facts come at the end of something um, and to justify it. And the only reason why we use the Sutton one is because we know how difficult it is um, and we know the impact of temporary expenditure with inside social care. Um, and it's a good one to show people. We've done this presentation to senior management teams. We've embellished a lot on the front end. This mm -hmm. is the market. Mm -hmm. This is what you And you currently have 68 vacancies which is costing you X in interims, X in temps. You can't keep doing the same thing because it's not working. This is the way to approach it. Thank you. And then very finally, something around, uh, for me, the employer brand and the sense of connection to an organisation, I think it's really important. People miss that out, don't they? So I feel quite proud of uh, Essex because of its brand. And I feel connected to the organisation. What's your view on that? That sense of belonging to an organisation. It can help, I suppose, with uh, trying to, in, you know, imbue that sense of belonging to an organisation for the existing employees as well as those you want to attract. I was going to say it's twofold. One is retention, that people feel part of it. But also, if I went out for dinner with you, Pam, and we were sitting around a table with eight other people and someone said, what do you do? you would wax lyrical about how great it is at Essex. Well, I've now got 10 more people that you've just told how fabulous it is at Essex because you feel invested because people have invested time into you. So that goes all the way through the core of it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Listen, that time just whizzed by. I know. <laughs> it's 12.31 and I could have continued asking you more questions, obviously, for you know selfish reasons here, but for everyone else. Um, thank you so much, Kate and Julie. Thank you for uh, a really concise and informative uh, webinar. Um, as you said, you will be circulating slides to those that have registered and the recording 
of this webinar will be posted by PPMA. For many more of you, please let your colleagues know um, about the webinar and to click on. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your time uh, in doing this. I've definitely learned a lot. Thank you so much for a really, really good session. Uh, happy Friday, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.